Praise God. You're welcome to the Love Encounter. God bless you. Thank you so much for connecting with us. Thank you for watching today's broadcast. Those of you that are watching and those of you that are listening, God bless you. Let's go right in the Word of God. I'm talking to you about the Word, the Word of God. The Word of God is a remedy. The Word of God contains everything man needs. The Word of God contains everything you need. The Word of God contains life. The Word of God contains power. The Word of God is powerful. The, 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 the earth was created by the Word of God. The sky was created by the Word of God. The great expanse of the universe was created by the Word of God. The Word of God is so, so powerful. The Word of God is a remedy for any situation or circumstances you might be facing. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20, and read up to verse 22. My son, attend to my words. Attend to my words. Incline thine ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in, thine mid in the midst of thine heart. For they are life unto those that find them. They are life unto those that find them. And health to all their flesh. Verse 20 has said, My son, attend to my words. Incline thine ear unto my sayings. In other words, the word of God is asking for your undivided attention. Your undivided attention. Give it full attention. When you encounter the word of God, the word of God requires, in order for it to produce in your life, it requires your full attention. There are so many people that are saying, oh, I have read the word. I have studied the word. I have gone to church. I have read my Bible. And I see all the promises of God, but they haven't worked for me. People are requiring that the word of God works for them, but they have not met the requirement of the word. Men are asking. They want the word of God to work for them, but they haven't met, they haven't met the requirement of the word. The word of God requires that you pay full attention when you encounter it. Pay full attention when you encounter it. Don't give it divided attention. Give it undivided attention. Be attentive. Make sure that when you encounter the word, you give it time. When you start your day, give time to the word of God. Give it undivided attention. Let me take you to Mark. Mark chapter 4. When you go to Mark chapter 4, you see the story of the sower, the parable of the sower. Some seeds fell on the wayside, others fell on stony ground, others fell among thorns, others fell on good ground. Let's look at verse 7. Verse 7 says, And some fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no fruit. Let's run and go to verse 18. The, and these are they which are some, so, sorry, and these are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word, and the cares of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches, and the lusts of other things, entering in, shock the word, and it and, and it becomes unfruitful. It becomes unfruitful. So the word of God comes in, and when it comes in, someone gives it undivided attention. When you give it undivided attention, it brings fruit. But when you give it divided attention, it bears no fruit. The Bible has said that the reason why the word of God doesn't bring fruit is because you allow the cares of this world to come in 
and the cares of this world chokes it. Undivided attention. Undivided attention makes the word to produce. Divided attention chokes the word. Does it make sense? Undivided attention makes the work, the word of God to bring fruit. Divided attention chokes the word. So that's why the Bible asks in verse 20 that you give the word of God undivided attention. Praise God. Verse 21 says, let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. Now, the word is talking about here meditation, meditating on the word of God. When you come across the word of God, when you read it, when you receive it, give it undivided attention and meditate on it. Meditate on the word of God. Joshua 1, 8 says, This book of the law shall not depart from thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, day and night, that thou may observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Meditating on the word of God day and night. The Bible is not saying meditate on the word of God for a few minutes. The word of God says meditate on it day and night. Give it undivided attention and meditate on it. Keep it in your heart and meditate. You know, the church of Christ has not discovered the power of meditation. The word of God is a spiritual mirror. Every time you look into the word of God, you see how you look like. Instead of you listening to what people are saying, what people are saying about you, what the press is saying about you, what life is saying about you, look into the word of God and meditate on it. Look through it and see what the word of God says about you. That is meditation. The word of God contains everything that you need. Can you imagine waking, waking up every day in the morning and you open your Bible you read the word and you meditate on it. Giving it undivided attention. Praise God. Now verse 22 gives the results of undivided attention and meditation. It gives the results of undivided attention and meditation. When you give the word of God undivided attention and when you meditate on the word of God, verse 22 gives us the results. For they are life unto those that find them. Life to those that encounter them. And health to all their flesh. The word of God becomes life. I don't know what is dying in your life or in your business, or in your marriage, or in your finances. But when you find the word of God, the word of God will bring life, will become life. Every time you encounter the word of God, you encounter life. So if you're looking for life, you need to give undivided attention to the word of God. Two, you need to meditate on the word of God. The Bible has also said that the word of God is health to all their flesh. In other words, the word of God becomes medicine. The word of God is medicine. The word of God is medicine. The word of God is medicine. The word of God cures your flesh. It cures your flesh. Your physical body can be cured by the word of God. Just opening your Bible can cure your physical body. It doesn't matter which kind of sickness is in your flesh, in your physical body. The word of God is medicine. The word of God is life. The word of God is medicine. The word of God cures your body. It cures your body. It cures your body. The word of God says that he will bless your food. He will bless your water. And he will take away sickness from you. 
In other words, the word, the word of God says in Hebrew, it says he will turn off sickness. Now, can you imagine waking up in the morning, you open your Bible, and you begin to read that word, and you begin to meditate on it, and you see water becoming medicine. As he blesses it, it becomes medicine. You see it as you take that water or you take that tea or that coffee. You see medicine entering your body. As you eat your breakfast, because he says he will bless your food, he will bless your bread. You see your food blessed. I call that meditation. As you eat, you meditate on it. You see your food as medicine entering your body. It cures your body. And you see him turning off sickness. It, come, it cannot come close to your house. That is meditation on the word of God. The Bible says, as he is, so are we in this world. If you read that word and you don't allow it to be choked by the cares of this world, and you meditate on it, and you see yourself as Christ is, so are you. And you see Christ, and you look at Christ, there's no sickness in him. There's no pain in him. As you meditate on that word, your body will become healed. That word becomes medicine. You begin to imagine. You be, through your sanctified imagination, you begin to meditate on it. 1 John 4, 17. As he is, so are we in this world. You meditate on it. You focus. Don't give that word or that verse Divided attention. Give it undivided attention. Focus on it. Meditate on it. See yourself like Christ. He's not sick. He has no pain in his body. He has no sickness in his body. Christ is not poor. Christ is not suffering. Christ is not confused. Meditate on it. See yourself the way Christ is. See yourself the way Christ is. Don't give it divided attention. Give it undivided attention. Don't allow cares of this world to come. Find you meditating on this word. And, and then you allow them to come in and choke the word of God that you're meditating upon. Close them out. Close them out. Allow your heart to receive it and pay attention to it. The word of God can become medicine and heal your physical body. Jesus said in John 6, uh, verse 63, It is the spirit that quickens. The flesh Prophets nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. The words I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. The message Bible says, the spirit can make life. Cheer, muscle, and willpower don't make anything happen. Willpower doesn't make anything happen apart from the spirit of grace. Every word I have spoken to you is spirit word. And so it is life making. The word of God is life making. Now if there is an organ in your body that is dying, your liver is dying, the word of God enters there and makes life. Praise God. If your kidneys are failing, give this word undivided attention and meditate on it. As it enters your body, as it enters your heart, it comes into your kidneys and it creates life. The word of God creates life. It creates life in your physical body, creates life in your marriage that is dying, creates life 
in your finances that are dying. The word of God creates life. Praise God. Every word I have spoken to you is spirit word. Spirit word. The spirit and the word are together. Creating life. Hallelujah. Your ears are a gateway to your life. Your ears are a gateway to your life. That's why, child of God, you need to be very careful what you listen to. You have to be careful what do you give your attention to. Your ears are a gateway. Whatever you hear goes in. Your ears are a gateway. As, as you hear things, things go in. They don't, end up, they don't end up only in your ears and you hear that sound. That sound is interpreted into your entire system. The sound you hear is interpreted and goes into your entire system. And it produce, produces results after their own kind. The words you hear go in, they get interpret, they interpret, they are interpreted, and they go into your system and they produce after their own kind. Isaiah 55, verse 3 says, Incline your ear and, and come unto me, hear, and your soul shall live, and I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even Sure mercies of David. Now, what you hear determines how you think. And how you think determines how you feel, your emotions. How you feel, your emotions, determine your actions. And your actions determine your behavior. Your behavior determines results in your life. So you see the pattern. The words come in and you hear them. And when you hear them, they affect your thinking. Your thinking determines how you begin to feel. Emotions. Emotions determine how you act. Actions. Actions determine behavior. And behavior determine lifestyle determines your lifestyle. Praise God. Your behavior begins to, de to determine the results of your life. Begins to determine the results of your life. So that's why sometimes... You know, you hear people condemning people's behavior. They condemn people's behavior. And they want people to change how they behave. But you see, you have to go back to what they hear. You have to go back to what they hear. What are they hearing? What are they hearing? Because if they don't change what they hear, they will not change how they think. If they don't change how they think, they will not change how they feel. If they don't change how they feel, they will not change how they act. If they don't change how they act, they will not change how they behave. And if they don't change how they behave, they will not change the results in their lives. So we have to go back to what are they hearing? What are you hearing? What do you hear when you wake up in the morning? What do you hear? What kind of music are you hearing? What kind of words are you hearing? Praise God. What are you hearing? What you hear will determine results in your life. So Proverbs 6 goes ahead to say, 6.20 says, my son, keep thy father's commandments and forsake not the law of thy mother, the teaching of your mother. Bind them continually upon thine heart, meditation, and tie them about thy neck, meditation. 
When thou goest, it shall lead thee, guide thee, teach thee, keep thee. When thou sleep, it shall keep thee. The word of God will keep thee. You'll find security in the word of God. And when you wake up, it shall talk with you. The word of God will speak to you, will comfort you. You can't be depressed when you're listening and when you're listening to someone, when you read the word of God, you cannot be depressed. Praise God. Psalms 119 verse 105 says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. The word of God is a lamp is a lamp to your feet and a light to your path. Praise God. It contains everything that you need, even light. It contains everything you need, even direction. It contains everything that you need. Praise God. Let's pray. Father, I want to thank you for this word. As your people continue to meditate on this word, you speak to them. You give them light. You give them direction. You give them security. In Jesus' name.